Head over to MiniatureMarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices and you can sign up for product alerts. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we are going to be nomadic Vikings. Going onto a land, going to different spots, summoning rune stones, and trying to split up the area so that we can be settled Vikings scoring the most points. Today we're going to be taking a look at Ragnaroks. This is a spiritual successor to a very popular abstract strategy game called Santorini. It's done by the same designer, Gordon Hamilton. Uh, this is for two or more players. Let me show you how the game is played and I'll see you on the other side. Now, as you can see here, the board sits on top of this plastic, what's called a tree stand. And so it's a three dimensional sort of table presence thing where this game board sits on a world on top of this. This gives the game some good table presence. Now, the basic rules of this game are simple. You're simply gonna take one of your three Vikings. There's two people or teams here, and you're gonna move them as far as you want until they hit the edge or something else. And you're gonna move them as far as you want. So you could move this one to like, say here, and then you're going to summon a rune stone and it starts basically where you ended and you also do the same thing which is moving it diagonal a certain distance so maybe you go oops maybe you go something like this now you can't go through these so you're using them to sort of block paths and create different sections of the map so this player might be like hey i better get out of here before i get blocked maybe they come to here something like this and maybe they go you know what touche i'm going to try to block you in right there and maybe this player goes you know what i'm going to move right there and I'm gonna sort of start to try to block you over here. Now, this might happen where it blocks off an area completely from the rest of the map. Now, if both colors are there, at least one piece of each of the colors, then these are still, you know, th this, they're still sort of fighting over this area, if you will. But if instead it looked like this, this player could sort of move out and they basically could block this off and this player is sort of stuck there. Now. You're trying to create large areas with your only. If, if there's only one color in there, regardless of how many people, it's a settled, meaning this is gonna sort of score like this at the end, because at the end of the game, you're gonna look at all your settled regions and you're gonna get a point for every hex in there. So for example, this player's getting one, and this one's getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 points just for this here. Now that would only happen at the end of the game because the rest of this is gonna be continuing to go, and it's always about like, which guy do I move? What am I gonna do? What's the timing? I put this guy over here, and then I'll wait till this guy moves, and I'll go over here. So there's a lot of strategy there. Sometimes, Regions might get, end up having blocked off with nobody there. Those are just normal. They're called wild regions. They basically don't score for either person. Now again, you're always moving your Viking and then placing a rune after summoning it. These guys are already locked. But if you cannot do both of those steps on your turn, you must pass. And if both players are stuck and they can't do it, then the game ends. And again, you score each of the regions as I just showed earlier. Whoever has the most points is the winner. Now that was the basic, basic game. There's also mythology cards, and there's a set of simple ones like these ones. Essentially, whoever's playing the, the, the ivory player will, would select two of these. The other player gets to select first which one of the two they want, and then it's sort of like an eye split you choose. So you'd only use two of these, uh, but they all change the game hugely as to like what you're trying to do and it basically just gives you ability. For example, this one here, when scoring you score all wild regions in addition to your settled regions. So earlier we showed you that wild region that had basically no Vikings in it. Well, you get to score those. So it's gonna change your strategy. You're gonna be trying to make a bunch of those areas. Or instead of summoning the rune stone and placing it, you know, in a diagonal from your, your, your Viking, you actually can move again instead. Or at the end of your turn, you can move one of your Vikings one hex. Again, these sound simple, but they really change the strategies in the game every time you play. I'll just talk about this last one here. You only place two of the three Vikings, but you win immediately if your opponent has a Viking adjacent to one of yours. So they're trying to stay away from you and you're trying to basically be next to them. Now there's about 20 advanced cards too. Here's a few of my favorites. Uh, this one, at the end of your turn, you can relocate one of your Vikings settled this turn to any unoccupied hex that was not settled at the beginning of this turn. That's really huge because basically if you get blocked into a small area and you're settled, you can basically move it to an unoccupied hex that was not settled. So you can basically like get them out. Really cool ability. This one's when you move, uh, you can either move as normal or jump over an adjacent rune stone. And that's really cool. This one here, if you slide through like a line of three rune stones, you get to take an additional turn using the same Viking. So just a lot of interesting things that really changes the game up. So much like Santorini, this game is simple to teach. In fact, even easier than Santorini, in my opinion. And you can't help but compare these two, so I'm often gonna do it because they're very similar. They have the same DNA, if you will. 
Uh, you know, Santorini was easy to teach, but you had that sort of three-dimensional element where you're jumping up levels, you can jump down, but you can only jump off one, and this stuff like that. And it, it did add a bit of, it was, a, it was harder to teach. This one is so easy. Move diagonal till you hit something or you want to stop. Put a stone where you're at and move that stone the same way you moved your Viking. That's it. Like, it's, it's even easier to teach. I mean, you could teach this game in 30 seconds. It's, it's crazy. And then the depth of this is awesome. You're thinking multiple turns ahead. I, I love abstract games where you're thinking now, but you're also thinking this. Hey, if I go here, they might go here, and then I'll go here, they might go here. You're like three, four turns ahead, but you're also thinking like, I'm going to do this, but if they don't do this, I have this other player with this other Viking over here. And you're constantly looking at them. Uh, and I love that because you're trying to prioritize which Viking to move. And a lot of times you'll, you'll get someone there and someone else will be there and you're like, if I go here, they're going to go here. Let, let's just put that on the back burner for right now. Let's kind of focus over here. And you're waiting for the other player to move like one specific Viking in a different area or do something over here before you can like move that one because you're like, they kind of got me, but if I can kind of like get them to move that guy over there, then it'll open up this guy. It's really clever how this works. Um, both the beginner powers and the advanced ones are awesome. I mean, just like in Santorini, the basic game's fun. I mean, again, it's so approachable. You could teach this game to anybody on the street, literally. It's that easy. Uh, but then you start adding in some of those beginner powers and even just the very simple ones that's like, oh yeah, it sounds so simple, I can just do this. No, it really changes everything about the game. It changes what you think, it changes how you're going to act, it's going to change your strategy for the whole game. As simple as the easiest powers, they do that. I like that. A way to just kind of like ease it in, but then you've got the advanced ones that have different ways to set up and different conditions and things are a little harder to like think about how to do it, but the rule book has like a little thing for, for each of them to specify how, how they work as well. Uh, this game packs a big punch in a short gameplay time. I mean, we're talking like 10 or 15 minutes for this game. Uh, and this is a game that you'll really never play once in one sitting. I mean, no way. Like, it's just so quick and so fun. Uh, you're typically going to play at least a two out of three series, if not more, with somebody else. And I love the I pick you choose mechanism of when you get the, uh, the, 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 the different cards there. Uh, also, the game, it's, it's, it clearly says even in the rules that it's designed for two players, and it is definitely best with two players. Uh, however, it is better with more players than I'd say the original Santorini was. The original Santorini had a big king-making problem, where you're like, you know, the third player at some point is going to decide which of the other two players are going to win. Well, here, when you play, it's, you're basically still just playing two teams, so you'll get less turns than you would if you were in, like, the Santorini version but you don't have the king making it sort of takes that out so you're like you know you're on a team and so you're working with them and so you guys will win or lose together and that really does take the king making out you just get less turns so it's not quite as cool as playing it two player but if you're dying to play the game and there's three or four of you you can still play it or it, it technically can play more it says uh but yeah three i wouldn't really see really playing this with more than four uh it's still best with two so i, I like that as well so on the negative side of things, no game's perfect. Some of the endings can be a little anticlimactic um, because you know you could see like halfway through a game sometimes if you're getting clobbered, you'll be like, "Oh wow, that guy just got his Vikings settled in a humongous region." There's there's like no way I'm gonna come back from this. And so some of the, you just kind of play it out and you're like, "Oh." So sometimes some of the endings can be anticlimactic, but the game's only 10 to 15 minutes long, so it's not that big a deal. That's sort of a nitpick. Um, I, the other thing is sometimes you miss some of these like elements of surprise. So like, you know, you might be thinking, well, what, which one, if I have Santorini, do I still need this? Or if I don't have either, which one should I get? And it really depends on you actually, because this is, I'd say this is as good as Santorini um, in many respects and better than it in other respects. So it's, this is a great follow-up. Uh, so which Santorini? So this has less surprises than Santorini. In Santorini, because of the three levels and such, there's a lot of games will end and you'll be like, oh man, I did not see you were gonna be able to do that. Between your power and jumping off this level and blocking this guy over there, I just didn't see it. And some people do not like that. Some people are like, I hate being surprised like that. I wanna be able to like know everything that's there and 
quickly and easily be able to like do my moves, but not be like, oh, I didn't even see that coming. And some people hate that. I actually like the surprises of like, oh my gosh, I didn't even see that. Good move, good move, that was nice, great. You know, this does not have any of that, I don't think. You can clearly see a lot more of what's going on because of the three dimensional aspect isn't there of moving up levels, which makes the game easier, uh, but it also makes it easier to see what's going to be happening. It's like, it's a, more of a slow burn than quick, big, ups and down moments of Santorini where you're like, oh, it's so close to the third. Oh, you know, Santorini has automatic win conditions. You get to the top, you win. This does not. This is like you're going until everyone sort of gets locked up. So it's, 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 it, it doesn't end before you want it to end. And, and I don't mean it in a bad way. I mean, like, you're not going to be surprised about when the game ends. You kind of know where it is. So that's different. It doesn't make it good or bad. It's just one will be, you know, better for you. I like them both for what they are. I like that there's similar, enough similarities to these, but enough differences. So for me, every time I keep a game, I've got to get rid of a game. And especially one that's like a ticket to ride size box like this, it's tough because I got to get rid of a big game. And this is very similar to Santorini. So it's like, I'm still going to keep them both because I still think that they're both so, so good, but yet they're so different, but yet they're so similar. It's like, I don't know, it's, it's really interesting. I think this is an excellent follow up. Um, and I, for me, they're different enough to own both. If you don't own one, well, maybe hopefully this will help you see which one you want to get, but they're both excellent. If you like abstract strategy games that you'll be playing that easily for the rest of your life, this is two fantastic ones. Uh, so that's it for Ragnarok. And because of all this, it's getting a saxophone serenade. So let's hit it. <laughs> Game Toppers not only transforms your existing table to a high quality gaming solution, they now offer full leg kits and dining cover solutions for the full table application. Paired with their amazing thematic premium stitch edge mats from noted board game artists like Vincent Dutre, collapsible cup holders, and really cool accessories, it's a complete system that upgrades every game you play. Go to GameToppersLLC.com or click the link below to late pledge for their latest Game Topper 3.5 Kickstarter campaign.